plan. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's event with the Office of Black Male Engagement. My name is Eric Westbrook, director for the office, and you are tuned in for the third installment of our Black Male Partnership Series. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We're excited to have you on. We have a powerful discussion that we're going to tackle tonight about the importance of fathers, the fathers in our community, and just the role that, that they play. Uh, we want to acknowledge, we want to appreciate, we want to assess, and then we all also want to provide access to more resources uh, and support for fathers. And so we're excited to do so on tonight. We have a uh, great esteemed panelists that are here with us tonight that are going to share their, their knowledge, their insight, and also give their just background of what fatherhood means to them. Um, you know, it's so important that we have discussions like this and that we share these, these times together. Um, fathers are, are, are one of those, I don't know if you all know, but I know growing up, Mother's Day was always bigger than Father's Day in our community. And we wanted to, in light of Father's Day coming up this weekend, we wanted to bring some change to that, to really put an, a, a focus on fathers and appreciation, but also talk about some challenges that we as fathers face and how we can support one another. So I'm excited tonight, as I hope you are, please grab something, some snacks, grab something to drink, make yourself comfortable. We are in for a great conversation. And uh, thank you for being here. I also want to direct your attention to our, our social media platforms. We have quite a few events going on this month, and we'd love for you to be a part of each of them. Please check us out on our Instagram page at OBMEPHL. OBMEPHL. There you can find tons of resources and things that we're doing. You can stay in tune with the, the community events that we'll be having, like our brother Stroll coming up on the 25th and like another fatherhood conversation on the 30th. And then there's tons of resources to read and look at on our website. Our website is where you'll find what we're talking about tonight, the Black Male, part, the Black Male Resource Finder. And that finder is located right on our website where you can go and find all things, all resources within the community directed towards Black men and boys. Now, this resource is alive and well, it's living. And so that means it's constantly growing. And we need you to make sure that this directory or this finder has the organizations that it needs to have on there. We want to provide access for folks to be able to know what exists in our community when it comes to issues like fatherhood, mentorship, education. What are the resources that exist in our own backyard? Well, we've created a finder or a directory right on our website where you can go on there and with a few clicks, you can find many different resources right in your own community. So please check out our Black Male Resource Finder because there you'll see tons of organizations, a couple in which will be highlighted tonight. Organizations that really reference um, resources and opportunities for Black men and boys. So please check that out. You can also follow us on our Facebook page, Black Male Engagement PHL. That's Black Male Engagement PHL on Facebook. So thank you once again for being with us tonight. Again, I'm your host and moderator for the evening, director for the office, Eric Westbrook. And I am joined by two colleagues that I'm so proud to be sitting next to, none other than Mr. Philip Roundtree and Mr. Lamar Brennan. And I also want to acknowledge in the room tonight our Vista, who is really the hands and feet behind this whole series, who put this thing together for us, none other than our Vista, my Nomi Lord, and our coordinator for the office, who is always connecting and making sure that we run things the way they should be ran, our coordinator for the office, Octavius Blount. So without further ado, I want to introduce our panelists and let them speak a little bit about themselves, who they are, and why this space is so important to them. And if you don't mind, let's start with you, Lamar. Okay, well, thanks for having me first. It's an honor, pleasure uh, to be here in this platform. Uh, my name is Lamar Brendan. I am a program coordinator for the ELECT program, which is through the School District of Philadelphia. Uh, 
we work with, oh, we've been around for almost 30 years, um, since the early 90s. Um, it's a state funded program. Um, we serve students under the age of 22 who are pregnant or parenting, mothers and fathers. I'm the fatherhood lead. Um, we offer supports to students like academic support, parenting skills, child care arrangements, job readiness, secondary school, whether it's college or vocational, whatever their goals is, you know, we want them to still know that they could take over the world, um, these students. And um, I've been with the program since 2015. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lamar. Phil? Peace, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, trying to think. It's always interesting when folk ask, like, who are you? You got to introduce yourself. It's like, got this whole little bio thing that I typically send out. And it, but when I have to do it, it's just like, it's always difficult, right? Uh, just because I don't want to dumb down what I do or or who I am. I don't feel like like bios truly encompass the nature of an individual, but I'm gonna I'm do my best. So first and foremost, I'm a, I'm a father. That's probably one of the most important roles that I have in my life. I have three children, 21 year old, 13 year old, and a, a seven month old, Ooh. which is, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, the seven month old, me being a, a, a old man at this stage of the game, knees hurt, they don't move like they used to, <laughs> right? I'm going to sleep, try to go to sleep at, a, at an early time, the grades are coming in thick, but that's just one of the, the most important roles. Uh, one that I, I, I truly, it's an honor and privilege for me to, to, to have, and one that I, I lean into. Um, I'm also a a professor, a professor at Delaware State University in the social work department, um, an entrepreneur, because listen, I went to go buy some, some cereal from, from the supermarket the other day. It was like four or $5 for a box. It was kind of crazy. So you need these multiple roles, hopefully bringing in multiple streams of income, right? So I'm an entrepreneur. It, man. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the founder of Quantify LLC, which is a wellness organization that that I started in 2016, which focuses on the four aspects of wellness that I deem critical for anybody, especially those who identify as male that needs to be running at optimal levels. Uh, and those areas are physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional wellness. It's the idea that if there's a deficit in one, then there's a high likelihood there's going to be a deficit in another. Uh, the impetus for that is was the, the suicide by a young man by the name of Emmanuel Sloan in January of 2016. He was roughly 19 years of age. He graduated of Boys Latin High School, um, all, all city football player, died by suicide and jumping in front of a train. And so for me, being a, a, a Black man who lives with depression and anxiety, takes medication every day, it was important for me to really be transparent and have these types of conversations. Uh, so I'm a public speaker, I'm a licensed clinical social worker, so I'm a, I'm a therapist, but my work truly centers on Black males and what it means to not only live, but to thrive. It's our inalienable right to thrive in this life. And so for me, getting to the root of what impacts our ability to, to thrive, what it impacts our ability to, to be not only present fathers, but active fathers, mm -hmm. um, why that's so important. And so it's just that's just some of the things that I do when it comes to, uh, to mental health and my work with men. Wow, thank you so much, both of you for sharing so much of you just who you are and then trying to squeeze all of that into just a little <laughs> bit. I understand how that can be because you do so much and, and that just shows just how much your resources are necessary and the need, right? The need in our community is great. Um, and so thank you. you know, Lamar, can you tell us a little bit about the ELECT program and some of the programs that are in place for fathers that may need mentorship or guidance? Can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can. Um, yeah, um, we're in uh, pretty much any school that's needed to be over 100 schools we are in as far as public schools and charter schools um, in the city of Philadelphia. Um, basically, what we do with the guys is we know like at that young age, they can be stigmatized from being mm -hmm. like a young, first of all, just being a black male who's a father. It often comes with a stereotype that you're not in your, your, your child's life. 
mm. when the stats say totally opposite. When we actually are the most involved fathers of any culture, of, of mm. any of, of any uh, demographic. So you see like these young, these young guys and they want to be a part of their child's life, but they also students as well. They had a really like vulnerable time in their life because they're teenagers. So even if you're not a parent, that's just like a crazy time. We can all remember you trying to figure yourself out though. Yes, sir. <laughs> your social world is running you because you haven't been on this earth long enough to get the experience that you need to sometimes make certain decisions that just only wisdom and experience can even give you. So it's just like a, a time where they're kind of fighting a lot of things and they need support. But, you know, we're in a society where like it's fathers aren't as welcome for support. Or they don't feel as welcome to even ask for support. Mm. And then at that young age, especially in the city and the climate that we're in right now, uh, we want to like offer support for them so that they don't end up trying to like make ends meet in the wrong ways mm. we need our fathers in their children's life because the whole community the whole community um benefits from the father being in the in their child's life in more than just a uh financial way so mm. we want to get them out of cop high school because they can expand their potential to make more money by getting their uh their diploma but we also want them to have the tools they could be the best father they could be and like I said, they can still live their life. Life is not over as like a teen parent. You just got to move differently than maybe your friends who don't have children do. You have a little bit more response. You have a lot more responsibility actually in that way. So um, we just want to support them. And, and especially as uh, Brother Roundtree was saying with the mental health aspect of it, as far as when they're not getting these supports, it could be traumatizing in different ways. And then that deteriorates from your mental health. And then the capability that you feel like you can do to provide and nurture and lead and teach for your family. So mm -hmm. uh, we just want to put them in the best situation that they can. And we let them come up with uh, their own goals. We don't tell them because you're the leader of your own life. So I may get with a young man and this is what you want to do. All right, this is what we're going to do in this amount of time. And we revisit it every month, every three months. And it can change accordingly, depending on how life is happening. And uh, we just want to show them how strong they are, because in a lot of these young people's um, life, they don't know how much I admire them and we admire them, us older folks, because I'm not sure I could be as strong as them in some of their situations. Hmm. But they may look at us as a pedestal. So they don't take time to like pat themselves on the back for who they are and what they've been to and being to the point that they are. So you just want them to see them for the greatness that they are and support them in any way possible. Lamar, that's huge, man. I appreciate you sharing that because, you know, as you pointed out, that's so, that's a lot of pressure. And there is a lot of stigma with, with, with young guys when they, when they have a child out there that, Oh, you're not in your child's life or you some deadbeat, right? We hear that word all the time, deadbeat. You're not. And a lot of us, a lot of the young men maybe didn't have their own father. So they're trying to do something they may have never seen before. And, and that can be so much pressure on you to try to be and become something that you've never seen. So the elect program, y'all check that out because I, I like that you said you're in the schools too, because trying to balance education and vision, envisioning yourself being where you want to be but also taking in the fact, hey, I have I have a youngin now I, that I have to take care of. You need help. You need mentorship. You need support. You need community to help you get there. So I'm so glad you guys are around. Phil, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, what advice you would give to men struggling with, you know, adjusting to being a single father? Uh, and then what exercises, uh, as Lamar was talking about, our mental health, what exercises would you give single fathers to strengthen their mental health? word you know when we talk about you know advice right is we we get so much information from from different places and it's we have to decipher what's healthy what's not i don't use terms like negative or positive i use healthy and and unhealthy because one of the biggest things is language right how are we looking at situations and so when when i talk of you know when i offer advice or give advice to just fathers or advice for for single fathers is to extend yourself grace, right? It's something that I wish I would have been told as a as a 
a younger Phil with my my daughter. My now I know I mentioned I have a son who's 21. I've been in his life half his life, right? But my biological daughter is my first child. And having my daughter at the age of, of 25, it was it was a culture shock, mm -hmm. right? It was a shock to to my existence. And it be, you know, yes, I had the house, I had the everything they tell you to get when you're younger, right? You want the, the house, you want the car, you want to have a, a stable job. I had all, all of those things, but I don't know if I was emotionally equipped mm -hmm. to deal with what, what was in store. Right. I hadn't dealt with my own mental health in a way where it was conducive to be being a, a, a father, not to say that she lacked, but I'm from the, the school of thought of if I'm living in a deficit, if I'm, if I'm living just unhealthy mentally, that's going to play a role. Yes, I'm, I'm present. Yes, I'm getting diapers. I'm staying up late at night and doing all of those things. But if I'm not well, right. That's that good. energy is being transferred to her. And yeah. so the first the, the first bit of advice is to show yourself grace. Even with my seven month old now, I've, I've never raised a, a seven month old uh, on June 16th, uh, 6, 17 p.m. Yeah. Right, trying to be as present. Yes, I've raised a child before, but I've never experienced this child. And so again- In 2022, in 2022. 2022. Yeah, what I say, 2021? See, I, no, no, I'm just saying it's just different. The uh, time- yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Too. Yeah, and extend yourself grace, right? You may have had a father who was present. You may have had a father who was present, but uh, uh, emotionally unavailable. You mm -hmm. may not have had a father. I know for me and, and thinking about uh, my father I had two father role models. You know, I had my, my biological father who I only saw several times in my life. Then I had my stepfather who he and I had a contentious relationship. And if I'm honest, you know, there's still some uneasy feelings regarding that, that relationship. But I had to, I found myself, you know, trying not to do what they did, right? Which is, again, that's just an unhealthy mindset to even start from. Yes, it's, it's noble that you want to, to be an active father. You want, you're a single father or you're, you're a co-parenting father or you're in a relationship with, with someone and you're raising your child, right? But going off the past and what you didn't have, yes, that can be a starting point. But at some point you have to step into your own and you have to acknowledge that, hey, I, I maybe I did have information. Maybe I didn't have the, the right information, but mm -hmm. recognize, you know what? I am going to make mistakes. I'm not going to be perfect because you're truly, you know, this is one of those jobs where you're learning every day because you're talking about human beings, right? Recognizing yeah. you're talking about a human being and yeah. we see how humans are in, in the world, right? You have yeah. no idea and you're doing the best that you can with, with what you had. So grace is most important. If you do have a support system, right? Friends, family, a, a co-parent, a partner who you can lean on. It's okay to lean on them. I know for for my sons, I listen, I lean on both my 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 children's mothers, right? My daughter's mother, right? She had to go through the the proverbial fire with me and dealing with my mental health, the depression, the anxiety, that the ebbs and flows, me trying to understand who I was as a black man. So just navigating that world. And so yes, yeah, she caught, unfortunately, she caught some backlash from that. And from my my current partner and in our child, I, I lean on her as well, right? When I'm not necessarily feeling my best, a large, if you, if you want me to be fully transparent, do I feel like I'm an inadequate father? Yes, I do. Right. I, I, so I'm telling you to show yourself grace, but in reality, it's difficult for me to, to say that I'm doing the, the best job that I can as a father. Why? Because of the societal pressures, what they say about men, what they say about black males, right. And knowing all of those pressures. And so we always have this idea we need to be doing above and beyond, right? We need to be doing everything. We need to be present for everything. We need to be uh, available at all times, but we get to the point where we neglect ourselves, we ne neglect our mental health. So that's another piece of advice where don't neglect who you are, mm -hmm. right? Yes, you have that role of a father, but you're also a, a activist. And I'm talking about myself, trying to encourage myself ultimately yeah um you're also somebody who likes to go to the gym you like chilling with your friends you like watching netflix you like making music because all of these things make up who you are you're more than just a father mm. and some, sometimes we get caught up in typecast in the role that we have like you're more than uh, uh 
you know, a leader at OBME. Yes, that may be what some people know you as, but you're also somebody else. The good brother is also somebody more than uh, an employee working with the Excel program. But again, we, we typecast and we get pigeonholed into these positions. So just remember, just you're so much more. And mm -hmm. also take breaks, right? It's okay. You need to take time. I know my son, my, my partner sent me a, a, a video of, <laughs> of a reel on Instagram and the brother partner went out and it was like 10 minutes later, he calling her, right? <laughs> and so recognizing like, yo, we need help in this game. Right, yeah. we don't have all the answers. Sway, ain't that what Kanye said? We ain't That's got all the answers. <laughs> and so that it's okay, but it takes a, a, you know, even terms like strong and what help, it takes a healthy person with a healthy perspective to recognize that you don't got the answers. So it's okay to lean on people. Uh, again, there's so much more that I could talk about, but I digress. That's huge, Phil. I appreciate you for sharing that. I know you were making me think about, you know, as you even pointed out to myself and, and uh, even Lamar, like with the elect program, I feel like you hit the nail on the head when you say it's so easy to kind of lose yourself and lose who you are and the things that you like and your interest in trying to fulfill this role of being a good father. And, um, and that pressure to try to be above and beyond what was done for you. So, um, and we can put all our efforts into that. And then, you end up losing yourself. And you know, the truth is anytime you lose yourself, you're not healthy. And there's no way you could be a good father to somebody when you're not healthy or happy with who you are. Like I'm not even happy with who I am and I'm trying to love and nurture and steer my children. Children can see right through that. They can tell when you're not happy. They can tell when you're not fulfilled or something's off. And um, I know watching my kids, I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old, mm. and I am most, I mean, at least it seems like it, but I am most um, fun to my kids and most effective when I am healthy. Uh, but the minute I slip and I get away from taking care of me and making sure that I'm in the right space, that I can serve and help them, um, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, then, then that's when I begin to, I see, I begin to digress and kind of, I'm not the father that I want to be. And um, I'm thankful for my wife and her, her, her support and her help. But I realize so much more how important it is for me to take care of myself and me to stay in a place of health in order to serve, to get my children the life that they do deserve and that inalienable right to thrive because uh, I, I want that for them but but I've got to be willing to thrive myself may, um, may I expound on that yes please Lamar. that both y'all saying um and a lot of what we uh, assume is being our best self is based off of other people who tell us mm. and one of the jewels of getting older and speaking learning from older people and living life and then passing down jewels to people who are coming behind you is when you can detach yourself from fake knowledge, if that's it, like to societal things. Like, so a lot of fathers, they think what they put on their, on the table is their sole example of what a father is like mm -hmm. being the breadwinner. Yeah. Um, bringing, bringing like a lot of material things while the mother do all the nurturing. When a lot of fathers sometimes get, um, they don't feel as well if they're not capable of earning that way, but there's other ways to impact your life because your kids most likely not going to ever remember all the stakes you bought them, but they're going to remember the times and the jewels you dropped on them. Mm. It's a lot of things that my father and other father figures in my life may have never, ever remembered. They even said to me, but I remember it 20, 30 years from now. That's huge. That is huge. You know what? I, I, I have the same... I have the same testimony, if you will, because uh, my father is, is is gone now. He's passed away a few years ago. And um, none of this stuff, the, the stuff that comes back to me is not what he bought me or is not the money that he spent. It's it's the things that he taught me, that he instilled in me, that the time, the time that he spent with me um, that 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 I remember most and that is so dear to me. Um, Lamar, you know, as you were talking about that, it made me think about 
some of our brothers that um, are coming home, right? So coming home from incarceration and, um, and you have children and, you know, having a hard time adjusting to life after that, right? You talked about all the, the stigma, you gotta be a breadwinner. You gotta be this, you gotta be that. For some, for some of our guys coming home, that's not easy. That's not an easy thing, like trying to recover and get back. Um, can you talk about a little bit about a, advice you would give to our brothers who are trying to adjust and to these st those statistics, right, of adjusting to the change of coming back home and being back in your children's lives and um, entering back into society? And then, like, how, what is the, the elect program? How do you all help with things like that? Okay, so um, I would say my first advice would be to that is the one, make a long-term plan for yourself um, mm -hmm. and try to come out with the understanding that, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and you, you, you fighting some unfair obstacles. And a lot of times some of our brothers is fighting unfair obstacles that even landed them in that position to begin with. Right. So when you come home, now you're facing some unfair obstacles outside now that you did your debt to society, but you're still being treated like you're still in jail and not being given opportunity. So the, the, the first thing would be creating a long-term plan. Uh, understanding that patience is a virtue. There's a, a, you know, a fine line between patience and, 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 and not being too content with things, but also finding people who've walked your path before you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great examples of brothers I, I'm, I'm, I speak with a, a who's done great things in his life and is a great role model for not just somebody who came home. Um, I, I have a stepfather who spent a considerable amount of time in, in the system and he's done great things, not just for somebody who came home, but somebody who ain't never been. I've never been in jail and he's done great things that I aspired to. Yeah. And half the time that I've been out here, like, no college degree, none of that type of stuff. Mm. So if you could find mentors who have been in your in your in your situation, if you could also know that you know a closed mouth don't get fed. Sometimes as, as men, you're so prideful and you want don't want to ask for help, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a stigma that I want to get like brothers from not doing, asking for help and asking other brothers for help. Because sometimes men are so we could be standoffish towards each other. So we gotta like you know extend the olive branch to each other to make each other feel more comfortable in our community. You could come to me and ask me for something, even if you don't necessarily know me. I mean, it's networking. We, we got each other as a community. So um, I would say creating a long-term plan, um, being ambitious, but also being patient, swallowing your pride, and then also just, um, also just, having pride as well like you came a long way you're here like that statement of you know is, is a corny cliche statement as far as what you know what don't hurt you makes you stronger mm -hmm. what don't kill you makes you stronger but it truly does because you know you don't learn until you touch the fire you know scared money don't make money is that that no risk no reward so certain risks may have backfired on you but you learn from it and you and, and now you're making uh, you know lemonade with lemons and it's, it's a kind of a mentality to you know, fight that outside world and society that really got it out for you in certain ways. But then also knowing you have a bigger purpose in this world and it ain't necessarily what uh, the society has for you as far as what we deem as success. Mm. As success is any man who his family is better off with him as a result of them being in your life. Like we may deem success as a, a account figure in your bank account or it's title or none of that stuff means nothing in the grand scheme of life. Facts. Is the, is the, it's all fake news in that regard. And we teach that. And then sometimes we get brothers going astray, trying to reach that imaginary uh, carrot that doesn't really provide any kind of happiness anyway. Yeah. So you want to keep the bigger pictures in mind, your family, your spirituality, your goals, and you just being the best, um, version of yourself and having that in eight, like understanding that as long as I'm reaching for my best and putting my best effort, and as long as I'm not half-assing it, I can sleep well at night, at night knowing 
I'm doing everything to make a better life for myself and for my family, but also creating true happiness that's not surrounded around just material things. And I think mm. sometimes that gets us caught up, all of us, not just somebody who's coming from home and just appreciating your purpose and, and trying to find that. We all got bills to pay, but that's going to always be there. But, um, you know, you want to just definitely find mentors that's been in your position and speak to people and talk and just be out here and just embrace the struggle because it's going to be a struggle. But that's just such as life. Life is a struggle, no matter what your situation is. Stress is relative to what you let it be. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's so good. Um, Phil, did you want to answer that too? Yeah, I, I mean, I think he highlighted the, the mentorship piece and the importance of finding a finding community when you're when you're able, right? Like, I don't know how it is in Pennsylvania with felons and being around felons and, and all of that jazz like it is in other states. Um, but find a community is is important. You're not the first person who, who, you know, have been incarcerated and now have to get acclimated to society and familial relationships. Uh, and so, you know, leaning on them in the event that you do, you know, because even that is a, is a privilege to have that type of, of resource. Uh, if you can find a therapist, right, there's nothing natural about being incarcerated, right? It changes you. I did 48 hours, right, uh, due to some white supremacy stuff that took place in, you know, at college. And those 48 hours changed me. Right. They impacted how I viewed the world, how I viewed myself. And so, you know, for individuals who are coming out from, you know, whether it's 48 hours, whether it's six months, whether it's 25 years, we need to be able to to emote in a in a healthy way, because what happens in those type of environments is not necessarily conducive to thriving. It's about survival. Right. And a part of Already, when we talk about this idea of masculinity and what it means to be a man in patriarchy, one of those key ideas is the suppressing of feelings, suppressing of emotions. And so now nah, you can't necessarily be in, in prison crying all, all because of your circumstance, your situation, right? So you have to suppress that. But that energy doesn't go anywhere. Those emotions don't go anywhere. They just manifest themselves uh, typically in unhealthy ways, even if it's corrodes your insides, mm. right? So when you come out, being able to have a conversation to talk about your experience, talk about uh, the transition that you are making, because it is a, a, a difficult uh, adjustment, no matter the length of, of time. Uh, you know, we're talking about building or rebuilding relationships. So recognizing that it is the long game that it is the long game coming out automatically and saying, I want to see my kids. Yes, that's noble. Right. But again, the, you're not living in a silo, right? We're talking about relationally, we're engaging with other people. And so, yes, even if you don't have the best relationship with your co-parent or, or what have you still got to, you know, at the, at a, at a basic level, respect the fact that yes, they've, taking care of this child while you were in or your grandparents or or you know if um, hopefully they're not in child welfare system and foster care because that's another beast in it in itself but recognize you know what i i, I me coming out and spending 24 hours might not be it right my child if it's an older child they may be disappointed they may have they have their they're their own entities right a lot of times when we think about children and I'm guilty of this as well. I wanted my daughter to be like, listen, I was I was in sports, but not a formal sport. So I go play basketball. I'm like, my daughter will be the next uh, best thing out here in the sports world and her running track. And so she ran track, but ultimately she's like, nah, this ain't for me, man. Right. And it was just like, hey, you, <laughs> man, how you going to stop? Like we, we supposed to be here. But I had to, I had to reflect and take a minute and say, my daughter's not a vanity project, right? She's mm. her own person with her own thoughts, feelings, and emotions, even at a young age. My role is to guide. And so if she's not feeling me for a period of time, again, it's the long game. For me, it's uncomfortable. It's frustrating. It's maddening. I get anger and I got to honor these emotions. And so when we're talking about somebody coming out and if the child doesn't necessarily want to engage with you, yes, that's hurtful. We got to own those feelings. Yes, it can be make you angry. 
right? But we have to recognize it's the long game and it may take time to rebuild relationships, whether you went in there as a result of your own decision-making or just because of how we know the system um, to be. But this, again, it goes back to that word of showing grace. And it's something that you can hopefully have a conversation about with your therapist and unpacking uh, what that means and why you feel the way that you feel. That's so good. I mean, having that this honest place where you can unpack and talk and share, um, I think is huge. And, you know, I want to highlight that on the Black Male Resource Finder that we have um, organizations on there that under our mentorship piece where you can find different organizations that can assist you in that, but also in what you all do. I want you guys to talk a little bit about, you know, why it's important for your programs to be on the Finder and then just how folks can access you. I know the elect program you said is in the schools. Well, we're going into the summertime. Can people still access the elect program? And Phil, for your program, what, how can folks get caught up and just get in the mix so that they can get that support as fathers? You know, um, moving forward, they know that there's somewhere they can go, be understood, be felt, and then also be supported um, in their role as fathers in our communities. Okay, um, I'll answer that first. So one of the great things about our program is even though, you know, we're in the schools and we're in the school district building, we are a 12 month program. So we are working with them throughout the summertime as well. We're helping them find internships, summer jobs, apprenticeships, um, any services that can um, support them in ways that we can't or be in, co or in conjunction with us. You know, our goal is for our students to flourish not like for any numbers or per se yeah. so even if it's i may have to send them somewhere because they might get more out of it from it if it came down to that that's what we're here for we're here for the greater good not for any ego type of thing so mm -hmm. um we 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 try to meet them where they're at as far as that point in their life yeah um and we even like for our guys who are home, um, I mean, for our guys who have children who may be a little bit older, we offer like family enrichment stuff. Like mm -hmm. you want to spend time with your with your students. So we may, I mean, which is with your kids. So if something comes around, let's say just for instance, like Disney on ice or something came and giving you tickets to that because you may not have that. That's a quality time that you may not have the money for. And, and we mm -hmm. wanna we wanna just not just be in a classroom getting you together academically, but we want to get you together as, uh, not to get you together, but help you experience and be the best version of yourself as a parent academically. Yeah. Um, also uh, professionally and get them ready to move on to the next part of their life. Um, so if they want to get in touch with us, um, they can always go to uh, electinfo at philasd.org and email um, and email us. They can also go to the school district of Philadelphia's website and type in the elect program. We pop right up. Um, they could always call me, 215-400-5416. Um, and we can speak, even if you're a student, if, even if you know someone who's not in school, we'll do the necessary steps. We, got, we have a population of kids who's coming home from placements in jail and all that. And we're getting them in school so that we can work with them because one of the eligibility requirements is that you're in school. So just because you're not in school don't mean it's not our obligation to help you get in school. So mm -hmm. I work with a lot of fathers. I'm working with a few fathers now where um, they're waiting to come. They're not even home yet, but they anticipate in being, being released. And we're setting things up for when they can be released, they're put right into school and right into our program. And then we also just help offer them other incentives too for just doing their own thing so like we they can get car seats from us pampers from us um anything you could kind of get at a walmart that will ease the, the 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 load on a young person who's trying to juggle school being a teenager being a black male especially in this climate that we in they getting getting thrown darts from all different angles and then we also trying to just work with other like fatherhood centric organizations in the city because we've got to be one community instead of working in silos. And I think we've been coming a long way um, in that regard as far as working together as a, a, a fatherhood centric community much better, i.e. what we're doing right here. So great. Um, and um, as far as what it means for uh, 
me for us to be in this resource, it it, it makes our, you know, you say you cast a wide net, it makes yeah. our net even wider. I may be reaching some people who never heard of the elect program before um, today. Um, and it also means to me that like the city is putting like a bigger priority and emphasis on fatherhood, specifically black male fatherhood, because at one point decades ago, you could make a case that it was a priority to kind of disrupt the fatherhood thing with black males to a degree in the 60s and 70s. You can make an argument for that. So mm -hmm. um, it shows that we put in a, a more priority on fatherhood, the role it has in our communities and how it can affect everybody. Because the more fathers that's involved in their families, I think the better the whole community is, not just that person's family. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Lamar. How about you, Phil? Well, yeah, I, I mean, it's, I, I think it's a great idea to have a, a centralized uh, location for resources. I never heard of the elect uh, program. So this is a, a first for me. Right. And so, you know, it's important that we do have spaces for uh, you know, resource spaces, a centralized location for folk to view the, uh, yeah, of course, you know, the, the, this is what we talk about, right? Fatherhood, people coming in and, and you know what I mean? And, and being appreciative, nah, uh, what was my, my train of thought? Hi, everyone, right? See, you see real time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, decentralized information, because that's one thing. I'm a social worker by trade. And one of the big, biggest issues that have been historically um, when connecting people with services, it's like, OK, somebody's over here, somebody's over there. We have to figure out what this information is. And so by having a, a central location, it cuts down so much. Right. Some people get disenfranchised from having to go from one website to another to another from one Google search to another to another to find different things call different phone numbers so if you have a, a again a centralized location it's it's yeah. so vital um when we talk about what was the second component the, sec um, the second component was your your how do folks get involved in what you're doing and get connected I know Lamar brought out how how we how folks can still connect with the elect program even during the summer while school is out they're still helping, they're 24 seven, you know, they're always 12, uh, 12 months a year, always doing stuff. So with you and your program and what you offer, how can folks get connected to you, stay connected and, uh, and find out where you're gonna be next? Where the easiest thing for me is, is social media, Phil underscore Roundtree. There in my bio, I have a link tree that has quantifyllc.net, which is the my, my website if you want to inquire about about therapeutic service. Uh, my therapeutic services are out of pocket. Uh, unfortunately, I don't take in insurance. But you know, hopefully, you know, a couple of these grants that I've applied for come through, just because I, I do want to be able to offer a service to the people. Uh, but again, I also have you know, you know, as 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 the good brother Lamar was saying, we talk about pampers and free pampers. And I heard that. I'm like, wait, I've been out of high school now for some years, but do I qualify? You know, because they they do get they do get costly. But ultimately, my you know, my my dedication, my services is to the people and to the black male. So even if it's you can't afford my therapeutic services, right? You could still email me um and, or inbox me rather a message just, hey, listen, I've been going through this. I've experienced this. I get that a lot, actually. Just people wanting to to emote, people wanting to vent, people wanting to be connected with resources like Black Men Heal. And so I'm I'm quick to say, hey, if, if you don't have the money for me, Black Men Heal, right, you can apply to their program to, to get some services, some therapeutic services. But again, a lot of times it's just being heard. That's what I've realized. I I was running a a, a a a men's group hashtag you good man for about about two and a, two and a half years in the pandemic hit and threw it in the whack. But I would have brothers of you know black brothers primarily, but just anybody who identify as being a man come through just to be able to be in conversation with one another, right? To be able to emote because when we, again we talk about this idea of of masculinity and and unhealthy masculinity. Brothers got tired of just going to work and paying bills. They wanted to to talk about their thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Why? Because that made them better individuals. And a lot of them there were who would come out to the group were parents. 
uh, my goal is to to restart that hopefully at some point this summer. Uh, so again, the best way to to follow up on all of that is my website, quantifyllc.net, but specifically my social media. Why? Because we have our phones in our hands 99.999% of the time anyway. So, uh, so yes. yeah. That's right. Wow. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Lamar. Let's pick it One, I just followed you just now, Philip. So that's what you said. You said phone is always in hand. So you got a new follower right here. Uh, um, And then also... Just piggyback, fathers definitely want to be heard. We run groups, workshops, but just only dads allowed. And I've experienced, without getting long-winded, I experienced the same exact uh, experiences that Philip just, just explained. These young people, people just in general want to be heard, especially when you're going through things. For sure, for sure. You know, I thank you both for being here tonight. Um, I wanted to turn our attention to uh, the, the folks that are on with us. We had a, a couple of questions that came up. And if you guys don't mind, you guys shared your contact information. And can you put that in the chat just for, um, and make sure you put it to everyone. Um, so, so it's not just to the host and panelists, but uh, send it to everyone, just your contact info, how folks can get, uh, uh, you, you know, your name and how folks, how folks can get in contact with you all. Cause that would be super helpful moving forward. And, um, you know, one of the questions as you guys are doing that, you know, it's a really good question from Octavius, uh, and uh, he said, you know, how did you all adjust from being single, working, and building your personal goals to a husband, partner, and father, and not forgetting yourself, and then loving your family still? So that there's this, right, you, that transition, as you both were speaking about, it's like, okay, at one point, you know, the focus was on you, and now, it's like, okay, I, I got to start thinking differently about, you know, responsibility. I got these other people in my life. And how did you do, all do that? And what was that adjustment like? Um, or you you want to go first, Lamar? Um, yeah, it's a constant adjustment because life is a constant evolution. So you always finding yourself because you got different versions of yourself at different times of your life. Um, you should be evolving. Um, so... I think that just understanding that, like, I'm always a work in progress. Nobody's ever a finished work in progress. There's always something more to learn. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And there's nothing wrong with not knowing. Nothing wrong with the journey. Um, oh, so Say it with your chest, Lamar. You said that <laughs> strong, bro. I hear you. Right. And so I, I would say that would be my answer to that. There's, there's no one size fit all situation there. Phil? Word and I got people, <laughs> I got people ear hustling, so I, I don't even know if I can answer the way I want to answer. <laughs> don't get <laughs> in trouble, Phil. Don't get in trouble. Nah, you know, you know, for me, man, like that, that you know, with my my first child, my daughter going from single working and, and building goals. I had my daughter in a relationship, but I was still single working and building goals, right? I it was like I, I compartmentalized, which wasn't necessarily a, the healthiest thing, where it's just like me over here and my partner might chime in like it's still like you over here but she she accepts me for me my my motivations are always pure right but it, it took for me to recognize that um i am a, a a part of of something bigger than who i am right when it came to to my my child and being a you know a part of a relationship and being a part of a a community that's when the, the selflessness comes out and you have to recognize like hey um, you know, your wants, needs, and, and what have you, they don't, they don't go take second fiddle. I always say to myself when they say, well, who comes first? And I say, I always come first, mm -hmm. right? Just based off the conversation we had earlier, where again, if I'm not right, so I have to take care of myself, I have to come first. Now I do make sacrifices when it comes to certain things monetarily and, and what have you. Um, but it, it's again, showing myself that, that grace recognizing especially for me somebody who lives with you know depression and, and and anxiety and not just that just you know for men in general a lot of times we we've been bred to operate in the silos that Lamar was talking about and so I still do that from time to time I still operate within a, a silo and I'm not necessarily saying that's the best thing to do right I'm saying I but it's the recognition that it's something that I'm continuously 
you know, working on is sometimes yeah. it, it continuously saying, Phil, listen, you gotta, you got, you can't just be in your room, fam. You know what I mean? Watching yeah. Netflix and what have you, you gotta sit and be amongst the, be amongst your family. Why? Because they need that energy from you too. And even mm-hmm. though you might deny it or so many other forces that are pushing your, your having your mental think that you don't necessarily need it because you've been self-sufficient for so long, right? That you in reality, you do need it. And that's why it's so important that we, again, this when we talk about this idea of masculinity and, and patriarchy, and I know you asked me earlier about, about recommendations for men dealing with their mental health. I just want to touch on that because I think recommendations is, is so important. Doing things like reading, right? So I just finished a, a, a book today, um, The Will to Change, Men, Masculinity, and Love by Bell Hooks. And some of the points that we were talking about was was discussed in there like we don't just become the you know this idea of being a breadwinner of being strong of suppressing emotion that doesn't just come out of nowhere right that's intentional and that typically happens um well you know as we've transitioned in childhood for whatever reason right and so me thinking about you know my son I'm thinking about how can I continuously uh allow space for him to emote to to express himself in a healthy way. It's funny, he was on my chest yesterday and you know, he was just seeing me and he was just like laying there and he had like his mouth on my mouth. And I'm like, it's gonna be a time in life where you are not gonna do that anymore. And not because you don't wanna do it, but because society has told you that our mouths can't be connected even though you flesh in my flesh, blood in my blood, yeah. right? And so when we talk about just being aware um, and recognizing and, and, you know, reading and going to therapy, journaling. I work with brothers and I'm like, listen, um, who have, who have uh, a five, what we call the father wound, right? There's a gaping hole that we try to fill with so many other things. For me, it was a period of time, it was alcohol. For some people, it's, it's sex, it's marijuana, it's so many other things. And it was just like, yo, write him a letter, right? And it's just like, write your dad a letter. You don't have to send it to him. Right. You don't have to send it to them. But what you're doing, as we talked about brothers who are just coming out, you're getting those emotions out. Right. And so in totality, again, it goes back to that grace. Show yourself grace because this is a lifelong journey. Right. Fatherhood yeah. doesn't end. Yo, that's so good. You know, it's funny. I, I want to share a little just myself, too, because I feel compelled. You know, I'm asking you, I'm putting y'all on the hot seat and I'm sitting here like, let me answer too, just real quickly. I, I feel the same way. I feel like you're constantly learning and you're always growing. And I know for me, um, you know, when I got married and, you know, and it was just, it was us, like there was a big contrast between like, even, you know, after being married, then we ha- when we had children, it was like, okay, my whole life changed. Like I had to, the things that I like to do now, I got to either get up really early or stay up really late um, to, to make those things happen. And I had to see, and I, and I still do, I have to see the value in that stuff still to make time for it because what, what initially happened was, you know, my schedule wasn't the same. So I'm like, you know, I can't get up things I like to do. I like to pray. I like to read, you know what I'm saying? I like to meditate, slow down, play something slow, just to encourage my spirit, get my mind right. Well, if I'm, I can't do that at the same time when I got a little one. So I'm like, okay, I got to find time. I got to switch up. I got to, so the things that I had already started doing as a single person, I had to figure out how to do it now as a parent. Okay. It doesn't mean I stopped doing it. It's just that I have to adjust. And like you all said, evolve and find a way, okay, now you know what's good for you. You know what's healthy. You know this is healthy for you. So you got to make time to get it done. You may not be able to do it. It's healthy for me to sit and watch episodes of The Office for hours. I love, that's one of my favorite shows. I know I liked you for a reason. Yeah, it's a dope show, for sure. I love that show. But I can't do that at certain times um, anymore. Now, but what I can do is, I can figure it out. And sometimes late when they all sleep, hey, me and man, we we going in. Me, I'm watching Dwight and Jim go back and forth for hours, you know. So I, I so finding learning how to love and appreciate my family comes from 
re being reminded how really, you know, those times when I stay up, I'm, I'm reminded of how blessed and fortunate I am to have them in my life. And if I don't make time to personally reflect on that, sometimes they become a burden and they become overbearing and just a responsibility and not really a blessing. And so um, whatever you can do to find that time to just get away, laugh, stay healthy, like stay, you know, whenever you start feeling like your family is becoming annoying more than they are like nurturing and, you know, that's, that's a sign, yo, you, you need to take care of yourself. Go, go get your mind right real quick and, and talk with somebody, go, go, go out to eat, go do something, but don't allow yourself to fester in that place. Cause, uh, it's, it, it can, it, it's just a downward spiral. May I, may I piggyback real quick off of what y'all just said with the sure. self-care aspect? I always try to like put stuff in like layman's terms, like when I'm dealing with like some of my younger students, because I, I have students that all the way to like eighth grade who mm. are parents. Um, it's like when you get on a plane or so when they tell you when the thing, if in the case of emergency, when the air going to drop down, they tell you to put that air over your mat, over your face first, because you can't save nobody if you already did. And that's, that's the right. whole premise of, of that. Like you, you, if you're not here and if you're not here and you're not in the right mental and physical, spiritual space for what you need to be in, you have no use to anyone else, but life is all about balance. So it's just about following that balance of, it's a fine line between self-care and we pretty much know when we being excessive, excessive with anything and and but I think fathers they we 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 too strong and too tough and so sometimes like we don't even want to just do anything but like y'all said self-care for everybody you're no good to anyone else if you are not in your right space that's right well you guys thank you so much for tonight thank you so much for your wisdom for your experience for sharing your vulnerability I appreciate y'all for just uh, opening up and, and allowing folks in to not only your services and resources, but even your experience as fathers yourselves. You know, I wanted to take this time to open it up to some of the folks uh, that are still on. I know um, we, I know there was, LaVon wanted to make an announcement. LaVon, do you want to put that in the chat for us and I can shout it out for you? But if there are any events uh, that we know that are coming up in our, in the, in, in, in this month, we want to highlight those. I do know uh, uh, our coordinator for the office, Octavius, he did put in the chat for everybody on the 25th of this month, we are having our six brothers stroll. It's our health walk for black men and boys. We're going to be up in the eighth district with councilwoman Cindy Bass. Come through with us, come stroll with us because that's what we're doing. We strolling, we walk in different, but it's an opportunity for us to really center uh, men's black men and boys health and wellness and so we're excited about that we're uh, strolling from the Knightstown CDC all the way up to the Kappa uh, Kappa Alpha Psi building up there right across from Uncle Bobby's so it'll be a great opportunity for us to be in the Germantown section of the city together uh, strolling in our t-shirts we'll have t-shirts for you we'll have giveaways uh, there'll be health screenings there um, it's going to be great we have snacks and ultimately, we'll have each other. And we, whenever we get together, you know it's always a time. So uh, we can exchange information, network, build, and continue um, this conversation on Black men and boys and our health and us thriving in our community. So you don't want to miss it. June 25th, Brothers Stroll. The link is in the chat. You can register there. Um, it's going to be great. So you don't want to miss that. Come through. I got um, to pull up when you get done as well. Okay, cool. I want to speak to uh, uh, speak to the king for men. Uh, Father's Day on June 19th, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, there is an event our dear brother LeVon Howard is putting on. Uh, it's Man Talk for Men on Sunday. Uh, he's got two events. So speak to the king. It's for men on Father's Day on June 19th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, that's that Sunday from three to six, there's a link there. And then a man talk for men on Sunday, July 10th. That's next month, July 10th via Zoom from 5.30 to seven. Um, I'm sure he'll, he'll, we can get some more information for that, that event in July uh, moving forward, but don't miss that event on the 19th, which is coming up. It's a few days away on Father's Day. So if you want an event where folks can get together and talk and share, you, you don't wanna miss that. 
Lamar, you had an event you want to highlight? Oh, you're muted, bro. Sorry. Um, also, we also have an event. Um, you can feel free to come to on the 25th after you've done the stroll. It's a, like an all-day event. Well, not all-day event, but it's like from 11 to 3 at the School District of Philadelphia Fatherhood Flame event where um, we, it's going to be a convening of fathers, practitioners, whomever wants to get in and speak on how we can not only speak about what we could do to uh, foster and, and, and encourage the environment of being fatherhood friendly city and community, but what we're gonna leave there with as far as how we're gonna implement it. So um, I will try and get it into this chat and um, before we can log off. So I'm trying to put it in there so you get anybody wants to <coughs> register to come. Cool, Lamar, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it up here for a while so that you know you can have, you'll have time to do that. I wanted to add to Lavon just put in here, Sunday Speak to the King event, is actually at 5126 Warren Street from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So that one is in person, 5126 Warren Street from 3 to 6 p.m. Don't miss it. Be there. Um, I also want to mention, and uh, let me see if I can plug this and get this in the chat. We are having another conversation on fatherhood, and we're going to talk a little bit more about where what we can do even policy-wise. When we talk about uh, parental uh, custody and custody issues that Black fathers tend to have, right, and co-parenting struggles that can get very real and very frustrating and, um, and, and can lead to a lot of unhealthy things. We want to start talking about ways that we can support. And so on June 30th, we'll, we'll be having a follow-up discussion around this topic of fathers, fatherhood in Philadelphia. We're partnering with State Representative Darisha Parker, as well as the Fathering Circle, uh, the organization led by uh, Eric Marsh. And so the goal is to continue this conversation about fatherhood in Philadelphia specifically, and then what, what are the policies that are out there right now that are in support, that advocate for Black fathers, and that are pushing um, you know, the, the, our, our, our concerns to the forefront and how we can help support that. And so I'm excited for that on June 30th as well. I'll leave it up so I can put that in the chat. Um, Lamar, you got that there. Well, you know what? How about this? I'll email that to everybody afterwards, our event. But I did want to say thank you all for being here. It is 7.03. I also wanted to say this. Everybody that was on tonight, this was recorded. This will be on our Facebook page. Um, that is Black Male Engagement PHL. If you want to go back and look at it, um, you, if you want to share it, you can do so. Um, so th th there's that. So feel free to share it, to look at it again, go back and get these resources. If you missed anything tonight, you don't have to, you can always go back and see us on Facebook. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Phil, thank you. Lamar, thank you. My Nomi, thank you so much. And Octavius, we appreciate you. Everyone have a wonderful evening. And make sure y'all celebrate these fathers out here this weekend. Take care.